Driver Practice Mode allows users to practice driving and form strategies effectively by giving them the ability to have the robots interact with game pieces. It cheats the physics so as to more closely mimic an ideal training environment rather than a realistic physics simulation. How Driver Practice Mode works is that it allows you to identify up to two game pieces within the field and configure how your robot interacts with them. For example, you can configure both how your robot intakes a game piece as well as its trajectory of release. For this tutorial, we'll be using the latest field, 2017 Steamworks, and the robot, 2017 SodaBots, both of which are included with Synthesis already. To get started, click on the Driver Practice Mode button within the toolbar. It should be represented by a controller icon. A new window will pop up, which is your Driver Practice Mode window. This allows you to take a look at various information related to Driver Practice Mode. What we want to do first is to configure the primary game piece. Right now, it should say Primary Game Piece, not configured. Click the Configure button to get started on the configuring process. A window should have popped up at the bottom, like so. This is the configuration menu where you can customize many different things regarding the game piece. The workflow is designed to be from left to right, so we'll be following that. Firstly, you need to actually define the game piece. Move the camera so that the game piece is within sight. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll be using the fuel, which is the yellow ball. Then click Define Game Piece, and then click on the yellow ball. If, we, if you are using your own exported fields, keep in mind that the game piece will have to be defined as a dynamic object for this to work. Once you've defined the game piece, you can set its spawn point. Click Set Spawn Point, and using the WASD keys, move the indicator wherever you desire within the field. Press Enter to exit. You have the option to change your controls as well, but we'll just stick with the defaults for this tutorial. Next, we will need to define the intake mechanism and the release mechanism. Under Intake Mechanism, click Define. Then, click on the robot part that is designed for intaking game pieces. Keep in mind that the parts you can select are based on the joints you configured in the robot exporter. With this robot, the intake is part of the main robot body without any configured joints, so we'll just select the robot body. Then we do the same thing for the release mechanism. This time, select the robot part that is designed to release game pieces. With this robot, the shooter is again part of the main robot body, so we'll just select that again. Next, we need to adjust the release position so that it is at the correct point. Adjust the X, Y, and Z values so that the trajectory indicator, which should be blue, is at the desired release point. In the case of this robot, it will be about X equals 0, Y equals 0 0.27, and Z equals 0 0.26. The final step is now to set the release velocity so that it mimics how the robot should shoot in real life. This part is a little tricky, but the indicator should help, should help you reach that desired velocity. Keep adjusting the values until you reach your desired value. Of course, if you already know how fast your robot shoots and at what angle, this part should be easy. Once you're done, hit save and close. Now you should be able to interact with the game piece you defined. To try it out, let's spawn a few game pieces. Hit the Spawn Game Piece button under the Primary Game Piece panel. Then, drive your robot over the game pieces while holding the Intake button. This should be, def this should be defaulted to left control. Once making contact with the game piece with the designated intake mechanism, the game piece will automatically go to the release position, ready to fire. You can then press the release button, which is defaulted to left shift to release the game piece. Now you should be good to go with the new driver practice mode. Keep in mind that you can also do this with a secondary game piece, which makes sense for a game such as this with both fuel and the gear. Thank you for watching this synthesis tutorial. Be sure to check out our other video tutorials. If you're interested in contributing to synthesis, make sure to check out our GitHub page as well.